After Effects gets a free tool for controlling cameras, Digital Paint gets more realistic, and there's a video model that's paying creators and giving artists precise control, believe it or not. It's Motion Mondays. Did you guys hear that? AE Scripts and AE Plugins are back with their Summer of Sales event now through July 18th with select plugins and scripts at 25% off. If you've been eyeing any tools, now's the time to grab them. Highlights include Pixel Sorter for After Effects and Premiere Pro, which creates that beautiful glitchy pixel sorting effect. It's niche, but when you need something weird and surreal, this plugin delivers gorgeous results. I mean, Patrick Clare used it on the Peripheral's main title sequence, and if it's good enough for Patrick, it's good enough for you. Animography's animated typefaces are also on sale. If you want killer type treatments without keyframe work, these are fantastic. Pro tip, grab the Font Manager plugin to make laying out animated typefaces easier since they don't behave like normal fonts. Cyclops from School of Motion alumni Kyle Martinez is included too. This clever plugin renders your After Effects animations with all the motion pads and UI elements visible, great for behind the scenes stuff. All the plugins from Not A Work Studio are on sale, including Projection 3D, which we featured recently. This powerful tool brings high-end 3D camera projection to After Effects, perfect for clean plates and turning 2D images into full 3D environments. The new version works with After Effects' new 3D system and lets you export actual 3D models. So head to aescripts.com until Friday to take advantage. Hat tip to Pedro, sorry for tipping us off about this next story about Mixbox, a fascinating technology from Secret Weapons that lets you mix colors and software the same way paints mix in real life. This is fairly complicated stuff. It's a mixture of additive and subtractive mixing. Colors in Photoshop don't act like real pigments. If you come from a fine art background, which I do not, you almost have to relearn color mixing on a computer because blue and yellow don't make green the way you'd expect. Even with Kyle Webster's wet blender brush, colors just kind of mush together and desaturate. But with Mixbox, Paints build up naturally. Red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue turn into green, and it looks way more realistic and vibrant. There's a cool preview tool on their site where you can play around with the algorithm. Currently, this tech isn't built into Photoshop or Procreate, but it is in a painting app called Rebel, and there's a Blender add-on for their Flip Fluid system. Secret Weapons are the same folks who created EB Synth, that really powerful style transfer tool used in films and music videos. Couple of big brains over there. Anyway, hopefully this Mixbox algorithm makes its way into apps that motion designers are using. Upon discovering Mixbox, we also found Rebel, now on version seven, with version eight coming soon. This painting software is designed to be incredibly realistic. If you'd like to try painting, but you don't wanna actually buy brushes and oils, this app uses algorithms to make brushes and paint behave very realistically. You can mimic oils, acrylics, and watercolors. There's something called nanopixel technology that adds insane detail to brush strokes, letting you export artwork 16 times larger while maintaining crisp detail. The watercolor engine even simulates water drops and materials have seemingly 3D textures. Version eight launches soon with even more realism. You'll be able to load environment maps so that your paints, which have depth in real life, can actually be lit, changing your artwork's look. It introduces ray tracing into real-time painting, letting oil brush strokes cast realistic shadows and reflect light. You're essentially seeing soft shadows while painting, super cool. I think there's some amazing looks you could develop and then animate with a tool like this. Time for a quick school motion update. Our all access program is accelerating with hundreds of new artists joining. Our teaching assistants have critiqued over 6,000 student projects since the beginning of the year and the upload rate keeps increasing. Last week, our community held a monthly live workshop where EJ led a crash course in Cinema 4D liquids, showing how the new particle liquid simulation system can create different kinds of fluids, including sticky, foodie stuff. Students had a blast and learned tons. We also recently launched Premiere for Motion Designers, our first editing course. Rive Academy 2 is completely recorded and launches next month to all access members. Built on volume one's foundation, it's much more advanced, over 11 hours teaching advanced techniques like bones and constraints, integrating After Effects with Rive, and making animation responsive, complete with layout breakpoints. This brings our Rive training to over 18 hours in total. And if you're on a team of three or more, please reach out about our team training program. Some really cool companies have been joining recently. Insidium, makers of X-Particles, have new features in development for their Nexus system. The new Nexus modifiers are designed with usability in mind, letting artists kind of push and pull parameters for more tactile, hands-on particle control, hopefully making experimentation and iteration easier. 
The new noise layer in the NX scale system leverages fast 3D GPU noises, basically eliminating slower CPU-based fields for major speed improvements. There's an in-depth breakdown on Insidium's YouTube channel showing how fast these simulations can run. It's kind of wild. This is all part of Insidium's Fused package. While Cinema 4D's particle system has gotten updates and might be plenty for many artists, if you need to go deeper with more complicated setups, X Particles with Nexus tools gives you much more advanced capabilities. You can modify particle simulations using code, create custom data maps, make fluids and grains, and use constraints. This tool set looks like a way to get almost Houdini-esque levels of control inside of Cinema 4D. Chinese company Tencent recently released an upgraded version of Polygen, their 3D generative modeling tool. This update focuses on improving both model quality and geometry optimization, a huge problem with AI-generated 3D models that may look okay, but have terrible geometry. The site is in Chinese, so you'll need to translate it, but it's actually pretty usable. There are incredible examples with PBR textures and Included. I tested it with reference images of a device from Teenage Engineering because their stuff is just beautiful, and also because they helpfully upload perfect isometric views of everything. The initial result was a fully textured model that wasn't perfect, but pretty impressive. However, the geometry was a mess, to put it lightly. Then I tried their new tool, Promising Optimized Geometry. The model lost detail and shapes weren't quite right, but the geometry was much more optimized. As always with AI stuff, it's only going to get better. For certain applications though, this is already good enough, especially if you have 3D skills to fix those issues. Killer work time. Our friends at Yeti released an absolutely stunning studio project called Sins. They've been working on it for eight months between client projects, exploring the seven deadly sins through a modern lens, blending still life aesthetics with photorealistic 3D. I love the low frame rate, the lighting, the textures. I mean, this is about as high end as you're gonna get in 3D, no surprise, from Yeti. But my favorite thing is the idea and the concept behind it and how that comes through in every detail. Some imagery is pretty jarring and very striking, and I love that Yeti wasn't afraid to get subversive and gnarly with it. This is one of the best pieces I've seen all year. Our friends at Stash covered a really cool music video directed by First Avenue Machine's Anthony Dickinson. He assembled 5,000 hand-painted frames into this video for London electronic musician Rival Consoles. This is experimental work that you don't really see enough of these days. You can't get this organic textural feel easily when doing everything digitally. Sometimes it's best to just get your hands dirty and actually make stuff. Painting each frame by hand took months and the process imagery actually turned into an installation in an industrial space. I also came across this incredible graphic designer from Poland named Andrzej, who's apparently only 20 years old and channeling late 90s, early 2000s graphic design vibes. Wild to think that Andrzej probably wasn't even born when this style was popular. What I love about Andrzej's work is how it's steeped in traditional Swiss poster design, but mixed with a grungy, busy look while keeping compositions manageable. It's really hard to make busy design that works without feeling overly cluttered. As more AI gets used, which will probably homogenize animation, looking for styles like this where the point is feeling the human hand will really serve you well as an artist. Check out Anjay's work, which I found at It's Nice That, a great blog featuring amazing talent worldwide. Controlling cameras in After Effects can be a hassle if you're not experienced. Thankfully, Motion Ape just dropped Camera Crew, a free camera tool for After Effects with great YouTube walkthroughs. It has awesome features, including automatically moving the camera between focal points. If you're orchestrating complex camera moves, keyframing, position, and rotation properties is lots of work to get right, and tools like this make it much easier. There are tools for adding automatic camera shake with simple controls instead of diving into expressions, automating focal length and zoom changes, adding multiple cameras, and even setting cameras to cut between each other. Lots of cool features, and the plugin is free, so how can you beat that? Download it at motionape.com. It's time to shout out School Motion student of the week, Eddie Klaus from Nuremberg, Germany. He's a freelance motion designer with a slick portfolio showing great versatility. Eddie went through our Demo Reel Dash course where students learn to best present their work. Eddie got lots of feedback from myself and TA Matt Corrales, submitting multiple versions until he arrived at a Demo Reel under 30 seconds that's fast paced, well edited, and shows off his work's versatility and quality incredibly well. Eddie told us, Demo Reel Dash really opened my eyes. Instead of just stringing together past project clips, I learned how to build my reel with purpose and structure. 
Well, all that hard work paid off, Eddie. Congrats, man. Our friends at Moon Valley finally launched their AI video model, Mari, billing it as the world's first generative video model trained exclusively on licensed footage. Last week, we released an interview with Moon Valley CEO Naeem Talakdar going deep into his AI philosophy. Definitely check it out. His vision is almost opposite to companies like OpenAI and Google. They're paying creators and licensing footage from day one, building their model with artist control in mind. You can check out Mari now. It's still kind of buggy and it's beta with limited tools, but what you can see is already very interesting. Mari has text to video generation, but also a controls button. You can do camera control from images. I uploaded an image of Mount Kilimanjaro for no reason. Mari analyzes the image, builds an automated depth map, and prepares a 3D scene. Then you get a timeline where you can move through and set keyframes for camera positions. The end results, well, we're still early. These tools are rudimentary, but this is the first time I've seen video AI tools heading towards the actual control we need as artists, and I'm here for it. HANA, the 2D interaction tool from Spline, added cool new features, including 3D and liquid glass filters. They're also adding auto layout and video layers, beefing up 2D capabilities alongside Spline's amazing 3D design tools. The glass filter gives you realistic distortion and chromatic aberration, obviously playing off of Apple's recent announcements. Any layer can now be a 3D object by toggling a 3D parameter similar to After Effects' system. You can do cool things like turning 3D frames into portals by clipping content while retaining depth. The obvious comparison here is Rive, but HANA and Rive aim at different things. HANA seems optimized for simple, interactive elements for websites, while Rive is incredibly deep, letting you build full apps and websites. And when it comes to tools, I think the more options, the better. Our friends at Lottie Lab launched Magic Animator, jumping on the AI bandwagon to animate Figma designs in seconds. The demo video looks really cool. Create a design in Figma, run it through their algorithm, get an animation you can open in Lottie Lab, and tweak. It's actually generating animations with keyframes, not video generations. I tested it out. Lottie Lab gives you a Figma playground file with pre-built designs. You can select your design, it appears in Magic Animator, and then you click Generate Animations. The best thing is you can open animations inside of Lottie Lab's tools. What you get isn't generated video, but a timeline with keyframes. If you don't like how things move in, you can open position and opacity properties, retime things, choose different easing curves. Honestly, the results I've gotten testing this out so far generally aren't super impressive. Examples on the website look way better than what I achieved, but it's an interesting idea trying to automatically apply keyframe animation to design layers. I do want to applaud Lottie Lab for trying to create an AI tool that gives artists more control after generation. And that is it for this jam-packed Motion Mondays. Don't forget to check out our All Access program where you can watch workshop replays like EJ Cinema 4D Liquid's Crash Course, plus take all of our courses with unlimited critique from human motion designers. Coming next month, Rive Academy Academy Volume 2, our most in-depth drive course yet. I hope you have an amazing week. I'll see you next time.